So these are the settings that I think are the best for the Sony A6000. I will not go through every setting, but I will pick the most important ones that will affect the, the image quality of your photos and video. So for aspect radio, you just pick a three by two. This is most common. If you pick 16 by nine, it's more like video and you lose uh, some part of the sensor that you won't get the information for. So that really doesn't make any sense. For quality, I highly recommend you pick RAW because this way you will get the most information when you are going to edit your photos. And we all know that all the magic happens in the edit and RAW retains a lot more information that uh, JPEG does. Let's put it this way. Why would you buy a really fast car and only drive in the first uh, gear? Uh, you would never do that. And it's like the same for, for your camera. Some people go for RAW plus JPEG. I really don't see the point. I would always just go for RAW and yeah, convert it to JPEG in the end anyway. Yeah, and if you do RAW plus JPEG, you get double up on the photos and yeah, it, it really doesn't make sense to me. So uh, go for RAW. File format, that's for video. And I have the first option. Like drive mode, I don't have that normally here. I have usually just used single shooting or continuously shooting on low. Focus mode, yeah, I usually pick continuous autofocus. Yeah, you can pick between these. I have explained uh, these in my last video and uh, you can go check that out if you want to know about this. I will uh, not do it here because I want to keep this video short. Then the focus area, I also explained that in my last video. I have the link in the uh, in the top so you can go watch that. But yeah, you have uh, different kind of uh, zoom areas and usually I just go with wide. But I do change it sometimes if I have to. Autofocus illuminator, you could take this to off. This is basically just a light in front of your camera. So if you're in a dark spot, it will light it up to try to acquire focus. Then there are the drive speed and the track duration. I think mostly these are for video. So I will not touch that at the moment. I will make a video later on where I explain these uh, settings and what they do. For ISO, I mostly have that on auto and then I pick like the range that it should go to the lowest 100 and up to 1600. And of course, sometimes I pick uh, the ISO myself if I need to. Metering mode, usually I go with multi. This way it will meter or try to acquire the exposure for the whole screen. You can also pick center. And we'll just choose the middle and you can pick spot if you wanted to acquire the exposure or set the exposure from a, a, a certain spot on your screen. White balance, I have that in auto because it really doesn't matter when you are shooting photos and you have raw because you can change it with the raw. If I had to change it for anything, I would probably go with daylight or cloudy. But yeah, for photos, you really don't need to worry about this if you are shooting raw. I just put this D-Range Optimizer on also. I actually have no idea what this does. Then you have the Creator Style. I don't use that. I just have it set to standard. Uh, then we have Smile Detection, Face Detection. I have that set to Face. Color Space is RGB is the most common, so I would recommend you to pick that. Auto Slow Shutter. This is for video. This is also for video. All these are for video. Then I have uh, Zebras on. And these are lines that will show you if you overexpose your photo or your video. And I use this for video, so that's why I have it on. Um, then I have put on grid lines and you can pick some different ones. This will just help you make your composition better. And I recommend doing this because this will help you uh, yeah, frame your shots. Then there's pre-autofocus. This means that the camera will focus on an object before you press the button. It's not something that will make or break your photos. Then I have set the finder monitor just to the monitor. I only use the monitor, I never use the finder. Yeah, and you can put this on auto, but I really don't like this because it will switch around sometimes if you get too close to the viewfinder. So I have just put it to the monitor, which is what I use the most. On my full frame Sony camera, I have a button to switch between these two, but I actually never use the viewfinder. ALE with shutter. I have tried to, to put this on on and off and I can't really see the big difference. So I just leave it on auto. Then there are the function menus and yeah, these are adjustable for your liking. This is how I have set up my 
photo buttons. And you can just see here, I have the focus mode, the focus area, white balance, shoot mode, zebras, and lock on autofocus. And on the lower part, I have ISO metering mode, quality, which I really don't use. This is not set and creative side shoot mode. I haven't really touched these that much because I don't have to, to use all these settings. For the custom keys, the ALE button up here, I use that for switching between autofocus and manual. And I use this mostly for video. Then on the custom button one, I can ch change the focus area. On the custom button two, I can set or lock the exposure to an object if I want to. The center button, standard. I think that this is like acquiring focus in the middle. And then here on the left side, I have drive mode and I can change the ISO on the right side. And on the down button is the metering mode. I will show you this when we go out of the menu. I have set the wheel to exposure changes. This is something you will normally will have a dial to up here if you have a, a more advanced camera. And I really like this when I shoot in aperture mode that I can change this and then I can make the composition darker if I need to without going out to a different mode or changing a lot of settings. So I will just show you now what I mean. The dial wheel is the exposure setting as you can see. I will change that here if I need to. Then in the menu here, what I usually use inside of here is the focus mode that I sometimes change, but not that much. Then there's the focus area where you can change to the different focus areas. Then there's white balance, do not change that. There are the separas, you can take them off if you want to. Then there's the lock on autofocus. In this way the, the camera will try to lock on a certain part of the photo. Uh, if an object is moving, yeah, I sometimes use that if I do like product photos. And then there's the ISO setting, the metering mode, and this one I never touch, and I never touch the creator style here. So for the buttons, this one up here is for switching between manual focus and autofocus. Then we have the C2 down here. This will, it's a bit hard to see, but this is the one that will uh, lock on the exposure if I need to. I have the button, custom button one up on the top of the camera. And this is also set to focus area. And this is the ISO as well. Here on the right dial, the other dial is just the changing the display. And the left is the drive mode. And down is metering mode. And I had all of these in here as well. So yeah, these are just like fast buttons to get there. I usually shoot my photos in aperture mode. I have explained that in another video, but I will tell you why here. The thing is that in aperture mode, I can control the aperture. So I can decide if I want a blurry or not so blurry background. And then the camera will pick the, uh, the shutter speed. And let's just do this to see what happens. So if I change the, the aperture, you can see the shutter speed is also changing. If I want a wide aperture, like with a low f-stop, because I want a lot of blur, I do get more light. At a certain point, the uh, shutter speed won't change. This is where I, where I will like pick the ISO myself. Let's say 200, and then I will compensate the shutter speed by using the exposure dials. So this way, if I know I'm going to take a photo of something that's moving, I can make sure that my shutter speed is fast enough to capture the movement. And right now, because we're inside and it's dark, of course, this is not really exposed, as you can see also uh, on the meter here. But what we will do now is adjust the ISO if we want to, to bring in more light. And uh, yeah, this is not a natural setting, so it's going to be hard, but now you can see the uh, shutter speed is way too high, so we can adjust this again. Let's go down to like 200. And at this point, it still says that we are under, underexposed a little bit, but this would totally be recoverable in, in post with the raw image. 
Hi guys, this is uh, Future Johannes and I just want to point out why I use the exposure wheel to adjust the, the light uh, and usually why I use this is because I can adjust the exposure on the highlights if I have a scene where the camera have metered for the whole scene and the highlights are blown out and uh, this is usually something I don't like so I will use this to make the scene a bit darker also the shadows, but most mostly here the highlights um, to make the light a bit more even in the photo I'm taking. So the exposure wheel is uh, really useful when you are in aperture mode like this. So as I said earlier, the middle bottle is center focus, and this will also change to single shot focus. This is really nice if I sometime are struggling with the continuous autofocus, I can use this just to to, to get the focus in the center if you need that. So this is a fast way to, to go about the autofocus. If you're not going to, to change the focus area to like pick spot focus. On my full frame body, I have touch screen, which is a really good way to acquire focus in a certain uh, spot in the, in the photo if your autofocus is failing. But we don't have this here. You can see this is the manual. So, I will just go to my video settings and what I have done is that I have saved those to the memory card so I can pick between these and you can see I have a 24p for normal footage and I have a 60p for the slow motion footage that this camera can do and on the video settings I have a adjustment that is for the color profile. I'm not sure if I can see. Yes, yes, it's down here. I've just picked this uh, color profile with uh, minus two in contrast, minus two in saturation, and minus three in uh, sharpness. And I think this is like the most common way to, to shoot on these kind of cameras, where you make it a little more flat, so you can recover a little more contrast in post. If you need to video, of course, here you need to be more aware of what kind of white balance you choose and I have to set it to, to auto when it loads the, the menu just in case you forget to, to change it. Then you have a chance that the camera will, will pick the right one for you but I always recommend you go in and change the uh, white balance if you shoot video because you don't have the same flexibility in video editing that you have when shooting raw on the, this kind of camera.